Hello, we are off to the races. The course is starting. And if I didn't bring it up in the introduction, this is how I want you to go through the book. I want you to go through the book. I want you to read each chapter before you start a new unit. So, for example, this is chapter one. So, viewing this unit right now, you should have read chapter one already. Is I want you to go through this twice. I want you to read the chapter, meditate on it, and then come to the course, that unit, then watch the video. So you're going through it twice. You're kind of getting my ideas and what your ideas are. Does that make sense? So we're, we're, you're kind of double going through it. You're going through it prepared. Why? Because again, like you, you want to create a strong foundation. We want to create a strong foundation for you with these concepts. But these concepts right here are what's going to help you understand more advanced courses or how, or the how-to courses on developing what you want to achieve in life. Now, without further ado, we're on chapter 1. Chapter 1 is the right to be rich. And this is how I want you to think about it. Even though chapter 1 is the right to be rich, think about it in these terms. You. I'm talking to you. You have the right to be rich. You have the right to have a rich life. Now, this is the dilemma with this book. It has a lot of chapters. It's very short. Each chapter is only four or five pages. But explaining it, he really gets to the point. He doesn't give a lot of examples. He really hits to, gets to the point in every chapter. So it's full of information, full of knowledge, and only four or five pages per chapter. I'm not going to read the whole chapter to you. I'm just going to pull out what I feel is important, important enough for you to meditate on and chew on. Again, with that, it really depends upon what stage of life you're in. Every time I, every time I read this book, different things jump out at me. Does that make sense? Because it depends upon what I'm going through at that time in my life, what's happening. So we might not be on the same page. I might be talking about something that you might say, well, you haven't really talked about this because we're just going through different things in our life at that point. That's all that means. Every time you read it, you're going to pick up something else. You're not going to digest everything. A one read, one sit through, or sit through one course. You're just not going to do it. But this is what I want you to do. Chapter one, the right to be rich. You have the right to be rich. Another thing I struggled with when I really read this book, he really hits it hard. You will, even in this first chapter, and maybe this has happened to you already. He talks about riches. He's talking. He talks about a rich life. Also, he's talking about financial riches. And this will bring up how you were conditioned as a child, what you believe about money. You know, you have a small voice in your mind thinking, ah, oh, that's not true. Oh, well, I believe this. So it's going to bring up things, how you truly believe. Because remember, the law of attraction says this. The law of attraction is working for you, against you. It's what you truly believe is what you're attract attracting to yourself. So this is what I want you to do. As you read, as anything kind of comes up to you thinking, eh, I don't know. That's exactly what's being attracted to you. Your deeper emotions are what's exactly what you're attracting, attracting to your life. It's a good thing. Start being aware of it. That's how you change. That's what I meant by thy know thyself. You have to be honest with yourself. So let's get started. The right to be rich. And a few par paragraphs down, I love this paragraph. He says, People develop in mind, soul, and body by making use of things. And society is so organized that people must have money in order to become the possessor of things the right to be rich. You must have money in order to live your dream life. That's what he's saying. So this is the kind of stuff you might be, I don't know, but listen, I want you to chew on it. Therefore, the basis of all human advancement must be the science of getting rich. Listen to this. Therefore, the basis of all human advancement must be the science of getting rich. The object, of, the object of all life is development. Everything that lives has an inalienable right to all the development it is capable of attaining. Listen, 
the object of all life is development. What he means by this is we're either getting better or we're getting worse. Naturally, by natural law, natural law of the universe, we want to become better. We want to get better. I mean, look at it this way. It's proven in science that our body is just not a physical body. Our body is a, a huge ball of energy. Okay? Then when you study energy, energy neither can be created nor destroyed. It just is. Energy is all moving. It's moving in us, through us, out of us, within us. So if we're all energy, energy is in constant motion. Energy is not stagnant. It's always moving into form, out of form. What does this say about human development? It means that we're either growing or we're dying. We're either getting better or worse. We're either attracting positive things to our life or negative things to our life. So by natural law, you're using it today, but you have to be aware of it. You have to use it for your good and not the worse. Make sense? This is how he's getting. When he says the object of all life is development, we naturally want to get better. Each of us has the right to life. This means the right to have the free and unrestricted use of all things that may be necessary for our fullest mental, spiritual, and physical unfolding. In other words, our right to be rich. And here, he's really saying, in essence, for delivering a rich life, he's talking about the whole piece of the pie. Then he goes on, he says, in this book, I shall not speak of riches in a figurative way. To be really rich does not mean to be satisfied or, listen, to be really rich does not mean to be satisfied or contented with little. You ought not to be satisfied with a little if you are capable of using and enjoying more. See, we're all capable of using and enjoying more. All of us are capable of achieving exactly what we want. All of us are capable of having an abundant life. This is what he's saying to you. You're capable of living an abundant life. You're capable of achieving exactly what you want. The purpose of nature is the advancement and development of life. Listen to this. The purpose of nature is the advancement and development of life. See, nature lives by laws. Everything wants to get better, improve, or swing the other way. Every individual should have all that can contribute to power, elegance, beauty, and richness of life. The great quote I like is success in life is becoming what you want to become. Success in life is becoming what you want to be. Exactly what we've been talking about. Success in life is becoming what you want to be. Having the career that you really want, you're passionate about, having that dream life, that dream lifestyle. We all don't want the same thing, but we all can have exactly what we want. There is nothing wrong to wanting to be rich. See, this is, this is where he's really kind of digging, and you might struggle with this. There is nothing wrong to be wanting to be rich. The desire for riches is really the desire for a richer, fuller, and more abundant life. Listen to this. There is nothing wrong in wanting to be rich. The desire for riches is really the desire for a richer, fuller, and more abundant life. Then he continues on. And he says, there are three motives for which we live. He says, we live for the body, we live for the mind, and we live for the soul. Let me repeat that. There are three motives for which we live. We live for the body, the mind, and the soul. And here I'm going to sum up this chapter. He sums up the chapter explaining the body, the mind, and the soul. See, what he's really saying is, we're developing the whole piece of the pie. Richness is using the whole piece of the pie. Richness doesn't mean that we live for the body, but we neglect our soul. That's not being rich. 
That's not being wealthy. Then he continues to say, richness doesn't mean that we live for the soul and not for the body. Or we live for the soul and not for the mind. Or we live for the mind and not for the soul. See, a richness, having a rich life, an abundant life, is living for all three, the body, mind, and soul, all connected to each other. So it's the same concept we have for wealth, health, and prosperity. The same concept we have for the power, wealth, membership. Remember? Now, I'm sure you probably remember, but it's good to get this over and over and over again. See, we're focusing on all the pieces of the pie. This is what Wallace Buddles is talking about in the science of getting rich. It's focusing on all the pieces. Of course, there's a financial piece. See, this is why I mean, people only run for money, but they neglect everything else. They're not really rich. They're not living an abundant life. They're wealth, true wealth, is what? developing all the areas of your life. And that's what Wallace Waddles is talking about. The body, mind, and soul. All of them working in unison together. You've developed all of them. You're using all of them as abundantly as you can. Let me end this chapter with this. You have the right to be rich. You have the right to have an abundant life. You have the right to achieve anything you want in life. You just have to believe it. Let me end it with this quote. Success in life is becoming what you want to be. Success in life is becoming what you want to be. And I'll see you in chapter two.